thousands of people are expected to gather in Trafalgar Square tomorrow to protest against NHS cuts. The rally is being held to mark the end of a march from Darlington to Whitehall as part of a national campaign. I'm joined now by Aisha Raza, who's an Ealing councillor and campaigner, and by Sam Hooper, a political blogger. Uh, with you first, Aisha, uh, what's the heart of this protest? Um, it's the public who is very, very concerned about the fact that their NHS is under fire. Um, they can see day to day that services are being cut. Um, down in London, in Ealing, where I'm based, um, we're losing our A&Es. That's, that's creating an absolute panic. Four A&E departments are completely being decimated. And people feel that they're things that they actually feel that are keeping them safe, it's basic kind of safety measure is being taken away and that they're given a clinic instead or they're given something that's not quite as good. The fact that it's being scaled down or restructured gives the feeling that it's not as good as an A&E. Um, Sam, you've been quite critical in these processes. Why do you feel they are misguided? Well, I think it, um, there are a lot of similarities to another protest that happened in June, the People's Assembly March Against Austerity, and I covered that for my blog, Semi Partisan Sam, and it was quite noticeable. If you talk to people, they knew what they were against, you know, no austerity, no um, government spending cuts. But if you ask them what they were for, they weren't really quite so sure, and I think it's very much similar here. You know, from what I've heard, talking to some of the people who are going to be protesting, no privatisation of the NHS. Everyone who delivers health care to a UK citizen should get their paycheck from the government and not from a private company. What they're actually for is less clear. And, you know, the fact are that, you know, the NHS can be improved, it can be reformed. Yes, it does well for the amount of money that it costs, but it could be a lot better still. And we don't hear much about that. What we haven't said is this attempt to kind of shut the debate down before it starts. Maybe the private sector has something to offer. Maybe it's a public-private partnership, but we can't really have that debate. And yes, you know, it could be, you know, I think I should set up to a million people, you know, optimistically may descend on London tomorrow, but that doesn't really get us any closer to fixing the NHS and improving healthcare for Britain. Well, I mean, I think any protest can be marked by the actual protesters, whatever political hue they are, not knowing all the issues. Do you feel that we need to have greater education when it comes to what you know, what the potential NHS changes could mean. I think that's a lot of it, yes, and I think it's, it's striking as well, you know, this march from um, mirrors what happened in Jarrow in 1936, but you have to remember, at that time, we were in the middle of the Great Depression, you know, 73% of people were unemployed in Jarrow back then. How fortunate we are now that, you know, what we're debating now is a rather arcane point about how we get our health care, that either way uh, is going to be I'm free sure at the point of use. for a lot of people whose well, services have been cut. And, uh, up and uh, I started this march in Jarrow with the, with the Darlington mums, um, and there is a lot of feeling outside of London that they are completely forgotten about, that up north things aren't the same as they are down here. There's a very definite divide, there's a different feeling. As a Londoner, I felt it out there, where you thought people were like, oh, well, up here, nobody thinks about us up here. They're cutting our services up here harder, faster, worse. There is unemployment. I don't know what sort of bubble you're in, but a lot of the young people that I teach are unemployed several years after getting their second very good degree in a very employable situation are finding themselves unemployed. So as well as unemployment, they're now without services that are actually there for them to make sure that they are healthy from cradle to grave, which is something that we've stood completely by. This is something that's in, it is very British. It's something that we stand by, and that is what they're protesting about, because they don't want it, people being compromised for profit. And as soon as you turn it into a business, which is what's happening here now, is that everything gets turned into a business, and it becomes put out to tender. And I know that from a council perspective, where we actually are having to give out things to people to say, you provide okay. this service, and you provide that service, and to weigh up, and it becomes money, not service. Well, isn't it quite funny that, you know, if you want to get someone from the left wing to sound like a UKIP supporter, or you have to do is talk about the NHS and then suddenly British values and our shared heritage and what we've done nobody's, together come out. You know, nobody's if, refuting that. We if, are if, all if British. If someone like me was to say that from the British, right hand, actually. then you know, I'd be a swivel-eyed loon. But you know, I do think that's quite interesting. The fact is that either way, we do have healthcare that's free at the point of use, and that's not going to change. Healthcare spending has actually increased year on year from 2010 up until now. That's those are just indisputable facts. We can argue about allocation of resources across the country, but this preemptive method of trying to shut down the debate before it starts, I don't think it's very helpful, really. I think they really do need to actually focus on the fact that it is a service, and it shouldn't be a postcode lottery as to where you live or where, where geographically you are. I know that in, in my borough, we're going to be without an A&E. 
we're going to be without a, a fully functioning hospital. Okay, There's so going to be bits around the outside. There's going to be no children, no maternity services in my borough. So can People you think of any example? People are going to have to travel out of borough to actually give birth, I think. That's quite think... a basic thing that you should be allowed to do. But can you think of any example ever of a hospital or service closure in the NHS that you would actually support, ever? You know, Alia and Bevan, who founded the NHS, himself was in favour of large centralised places that delivered service because it was the most efficient way to do it. If we have a lot of those people on the marches are involved in quite nimbyish style, not in my backyard, don't close my local service, which is great for them, it's not good for the country as a whole. It's very easy to instinctively oppose every cut, but, that, but then, as you say, that doesn't help the uniform healthcare that all British people get. So we need to think a bit more carefully about this. And but does it, okay, there's restructuring issues, that's a completely separate thing. But if you're actually cutting things out and saying, we're not having this anymore, and why? Because we can't afford it. But on the other hand, here's 60 million pounds for restructuring. Why don't you put that 60 million pounds into making this more workable, rather than saying that's shutting down? We recently had a report about the, apparently the trauma center that we're supposed to be banking on is not good enough. So basically you're taking away our services for another service that's substandard. Thank you both very much. Sadly, it's all we have time for. It's a debate that could rage all day, all week, and no doubt will throughout the media. I'd just like Age to think if everybody could come tomorrow, that would be lovely. We'd be absolutely overjoyed to see you. That's the Trafalgar Square for the March to Sabre. Thank you both, Sam Hooper and Asia. Thank, well, you. thank you both very much indeed. Now, it's our big uh, talk all day, the NHS cuts. Our poll today has been asking, have you been affected by NHS cuts? That's been on our website all morning. You can still head over to our website to take part. The results so far is, yes, you have been affected, 45%, while 55% saying no. But it's a very quick moving, so if you want to take part, head over to our website. Now, children as young as 10 are being trapped into gang life. Not only that, but once in, they're finding it hard to escape. That's according to new research.